Hello, YouTube. This is Douglas, and today we're going to be talking about all of the work that I've been putting into my Voxel engine over the past month. So, since my last video in November, I've actually rewritten the entirety of my Voxel engine. That is over 8,000 lines of Rust code, either copied or redone or just completely discarded and replaced with something else. So I'm very excited to share all of the improvements to the engine I've made. So the thing that actually changed the most was the core event library that I was using to design my engine. So I talk a little bit more about my motivations for this in devlog number six, but the entirety of the Voxel engine was structured around this sort of event systems concept where you had event systems, which were groups of event handlers with sh some shared internal state, and the event systems could raise events and then respond to events. And all of this was coded into this event library that I called the geese, which I posted on GitHub. And this initially worked very well. Um, this sort of concept of raising an event and then reacting to it felt very natural as I was doing things like network programming and having to deal with, you know, a user sending some information to the server and the server sending some information to the user and that sort of thing. But there was a problem with this original version of the event library geese, which was that systems were completely isolated. They couldn't interact in any other way than sending events. So if I had a graphics event system, for example, and a networking event system, there was no way that they could talk to one another without raising events. And in a, some sense, you want this sort of isolation. You don't want your components to overlap too much, but it made modularity really hard because what ended up happening was I had these huge monolithic event systems. Like I had a graphics event system, which took care of everything from creating frame buffers to meshing voxel octrees to actually rendering them. And what I really wanted was to actually be able to break down my systems more and then have them depend upon one another in some fashion so that I could break the responsibility of creating the frame buffers for rendering from the responsibility of creating the voxel meshes and still sort of have that be one coherent modular set of event systems. So I actually completely rewrote my event library geese to add an additional feature. And this additional feature was that event systems could have dependencies on other event systems. So all of the event handlers sort of formed a directed acyclic graph of dependencies and geese would now dynamically reload them and um, event handlers could query other event systems if necessary, as long as they were a dependency. And this was a really wonderful change because now what I could do, for example, was I could have a graphic system, which just manages the lowest level graphics tasks, like figuring out what resolution the screen is. And then I could have a voxel uh, renderer and a lighting renderer uh, event system each depend upon this graphic system. And they could query this graphic system for information like what is the current screen resolution without having to be a part of it, which was the core problem with the original version of Geese. So this new version of my event system library is now on GitHub and it's published on crates.io with documentation because I know some people were asking back when I unveiled the thing uh, a few months ago if I would be ever formally publishing it on crates. So the answer is yes, it's on there now. And if you're interested in seeing more sort of how I've structured my project, please do feel free to take a look. So having this completely different <laughs> sort of library in hand after I rewrote Geese, I had to take the entirety of my Voxel engine and rewrite it around the design of my new event library. And so I ended up rewriting essentially all of the engine. Not completely from scratch, there was a bit of copying and pasting, but for the most part it was from scratch and in the process I was able to make a bunch of improvements to the code's performance and cleanliness and clarity. First and foremost, now 
essentially all of the code has comments, documentation comments. Uh, another thing I did was I changed the representation of various voxel materials from just an unsigned 16-bit integer to a specific material ID type, which sort of follows the Rust principle of encoding as much information as you can in the type system. I also made it so that the graphic system could be dynamically reloaded during runtime. So if the user had to enable something like vSync, they could do that without restarting the game. Um, even though re enabling vSync requires you to reload your OpenGL context. Uh, another thing I did was switch to the U web framework for publishing my game to the web. And that's, this just makes tasks like bundling the WASM components a bit easier. I abstracted my networking system and redesigned it to be more idiomatic to the sort of geese event system principles. And I actually open sourced this event system. It's called, or this networking system. It's called geese pool and it is on GitHub and crates.io. So feel free to check that out as well. I rewrote client server network synchronization and abstracted the synchronization of chunks of voxels in the game world. So now the server keeps track of changed voxel regions automatically. And those changes are implicitly sent to clients which means that I can edit voxels server side and they'll, uh, the changes will appear client side without me ever having to explicitly write networking code uh, during those voxel edits. As I said, I completely redid the graphic system and I also added levels of detail. So when you're farther away from a chunk now, a lower quality version of it is displayed, which allows me to save on vertex shader invocations. While rewriting the graphic system, I also decided to try out a pure rasterization technique, uh, greedy meshing for rendering voxels, uh, just to see sort of what the performance would be like. That's what you see on screen now. And it's actually quite comparable to parallax ray marching. So maybe I will investigate it more in the future. There will be another separate video on this. It's not the focus for today, but all of the scenes you see in this video are rendered using pure rasterization, just drawing triangles on screen. One of my favorite changes that I made was uh, to voxel editing. Now, when you edit voxels, there's actually client side prediction. So your changes to the voxel world appear on the client, appear on your screen before the server acknowledges them, which makes editing feel a lot smoother, even actually just in a local game, which is really kind of cool. And this is just the beginning. I've done many, many other changes. It's been a whole lot of work. That's about all I have for you guys this video. I was hoping to have a new feature or two to show off, but unfortunately, time will simply not permit it. So look out in January for a video with some fresh content. No promises, but I might start working on the physics engine. Until then, thank you very much for watching. Please leave a like, subscribe, and let me know down in the comment section how you feel about this more informal, conversational style of video. Thanks again, and have a lovely day.